everybody, welcome to Outdoor Inspirations. I'm Kevin and it's a beautiful spring day and what better time of year than to plant a vegetable garden. And today we're at my parents' house and they have a beautiful, lovely garden that's been cultivated over the years. So we're gonna go till it today and then we're gonna show you seeding it and developing the vegetables. And at the end, you're gonna see the results of some amazing vegetables. So let's check it out. So we got, let's look at this soil right now. So you can take a nice heap and helping of it and it's nice and cultivated. Now it has, so now it has, what you're seeing here is leftover ryegrass from the winter stabilization of the garden. And so when you till that in, it just enriches it further with organics. But you see, you have a nice clay base with a lot of organic material so it's putting it into this nice medium rich brown that's very nutritious and Field. holds moisture Field. oh yeah i saw a ton of earthworms as i was tilling it's got ton, so, tons of earthworms earthworms that are so beneficial for aeration and yes. loosening soil yes. and the castings from earthworms further develop natural fertilizer so it's just really awesome so we can't wait to finish tilling and uh, planting seed. Oh, an avocado seed. You see that sprouting? That a tater? Oh, it's yeah, some it's avocado. Is it, Taking off, I'm, I will plant this avocado and donate it to the Dorcas shop. Hey, Mom, Dad. I tilled the garden, where's my lunch money and allowance now? <laughs> I'll pay you back in tomatoes. There you go, I'd, that'll win. That's a winner winner there. Can't wait for the maters. So tell me what uh, what we're, what you guys are planting uh, this year. Tell everybody what you're planting. Tomatoes, cucumbers. Green beans. Peppers. No peas this year. No peas. Okra. Mm. Squash. Squash. Peppers, you said peppers. Yeah, what kind of peppers? Different kinds. Banana, yeah. sweet pepper. Jalapeno. Jalapeno, huh? And bell pepper. Bell pepper, yeah. Bell pepper, yeah. All kinds of tomatoes. All kinds. Woo! It's never been tilled up here. Crisscross applesauced it. And it's ready for seed. So you guys are going to seed next, uh, tomorrow yes. maybe? Yeah. This weekend, yeah. Okay, cool. We'll be back Thank at you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Happy gardening. All right, everybody. This is two weeks later, and we've got the pole bean trellis up. Those are already popping out of the ground, and the parents have already planted some uh, tomato plants that they had been, what, dead in the greenhouse? Yeah, uh, we, we planted them from seed and in grow the basement them over yep. the winter. Yep. So, so those were grown up enough to plant and typically the reason um, they just planted these tomato plants is uh, you know it's best to plant after frost yeah, threat of, frost. Threat of oh. frost is over with which in this area is mid-april mid-april here in north kakalaki but if you can see the pole beans we planted from seed they're already up and at them Just after a couple weeks, and they'll climb up uh, the netting of the trellis system here. 
so let's plant a few more tomato plants. We're, uh, we're going to plant some more tomato plants that we grow from seed over the winter in our basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can tell from our setup, we have a lot of trees in the area. Mm -hmm. So we put the tomatoes, which is our favorite fruit, in the best part of the garden to get maximum sun. Right. Which is this side of the garden. So we just start off with uh, a deep enough hole for the plant. And you have to plant them three to four feet apart, each plant. And then uh, I usually put a little fertilizer in the hole. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then the plants go in. And you typically plant up to the first level of leaves. You cover them with soil up to the first level of the leaves. Okay. Right? And then just kind of firm it in. Firm it in. And then what I usually do is put a little mulch around it. Mm -hmm. Keep the moisture in. And then the last is I place a cage around it, right? Mm -hmm. To give the plant support. Now cages come in all different forms. I've made these out of, uh, what do they call them? Reinforcement wire, like when they- Masonry wire? Yeah, when they lay a driveway or a road. Mm -hmm. And these things are like 30 years old. Wow. And in our case, where we don't have full sun, our plants get six to eight feet tall. So you need a lot of support, mm -hmm. right? And these things just hold up. And all you have to do, we have the bottom has uh, cut yeah. away one rung of yeah. wire. Spikes on it. So all you have to do is just shove it Step in the ground. It down. And it's done. And the weight of the tomatoes will climb and keep well, it down. It just, needs, it just needs a little support. Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, cages that you can buy like this from Home Depot and Lowe's, which are okay, but like they're not as strong. Okay. And in our case, our plants get very tall. Oh yeah. So, so this, uh, these give you a little bit more height and they're more sturdy. Yeah, and then you, you know, of course you can just reach in and pick the tomatoes, and uh, they work really well. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's the maters. Okay, so we're gonna plant cucumbers now. And what, what we do is we put them along this trellis fence. So they grow up and we'll take up some mushroom in the garden. So we'll start off with this post. And about two or three feet apart. Okay. And then <clears throat> you usually typically put in two or three seeds in the mound. Her mound. Yeah. You can do more. And then you just cover them up, okay. fertilize them, water them in. Good to go. Plant them shallow. Yeah. And what they'll do is they'll start climbing up this trellis. Trellis system, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to check back in a few weeks. Stay tuned. So this is a couple weeks later and you can see the pole beans have sprouted up nice and they're going to train as they grow. My parents will train them on these guides and they'll come all the way to the top of these nettings and guidelines. They just have so many beans. It's awesome. I'm here showing you my garlic. As you see, it's already falling over. It is 
matured and now I'll have to dig it up. Okay. And also notice the clover. This clover uh, is used to attract bees to pollinate the garden. Tomatoes and different types of vegetables that need po poll pollination. Pollination. So the bees, you're attracting more and more bees to the garden. Right. Okay. And hopefully we'll get some, all kinds of insects that fly in to the clover and then carry bees. Uh, onto the plants. Yeah, and bees, hopefully not wasps. <laughs> the plants will start blooming and so the bees will come from the clover to the flowers on the plants okay. and go from flower to flower, thus cross-pollinating. Oh, you cut it. Derek, no I didn't. Mm -hmm. This is the way it does. Uh, it divides. You got one right on your... This is the best. Well, no, look at the one at your shoulder. Oh, no. Okay, film it. I am. It's a big one. Pick it up. Don't dig it. God, that's a whopper there. It's beautiful. It's whole. Juicy. Hey, everybody. All right, we're back. Two and a half months later. And you can see how much the beans have grown. It's amazing. Maybe some pest control. Have you had Japanese beetles come? Uh... Yeah, this is the time for Japanese beetles. We don't put any chemicals on there. We just have a Japanese beetle patrol. Right. And we pick them off by hand. Yeah. And they just eat the leaves. They don't eat the beans, so. Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of foliage for the sun to plenty for them process too. the fruit yeah. and stuff. So we don't put anything on them, no seven or anything. Okay. So, so, yeah, what, so what we did, if you remember, we planted this row first. Yeah. And two weeks later this row, and two weeks later this row. Okay. Staggering. All right, and then we got some cucumbers starting to come up down yeah. that row. And boy, look at these mater vines. They're coming up really nice, and it's a mixture of different kinds. Yeah, we've got the, the cherry tomatoes. These are the Roma tomatoes here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the regular bitter boys. That's nice. All told, we've got 50 plants. <laughs> Golly, that's a lot of maters. Yeah, well, we don't get full sun, so yeah. they don't produce like full sun a full sun garden. Right, we're late in the evening, so yeah. sun's setting. We get, you know, morning sun and midday. Okay. Yeah, sun's setting over there. Oh, yeah, dude. Huh? How about that one? <laughs> All right, guys, so I got my son and my daughter with me, Griffin and Taylor, and they're going to pick some maters. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Isn't that good? Now take a bite. Uh -oh. Take a bite. Oh! <laughs> All right, Dado. So we're at the tail end of the season. Just give us a little recap. Well, here it is uh, mid August. And our tomatoes are just, the larger ones are just now coming in. They were late this year. Normally, we get them, the larger tomatoes, the first week in July. And here it is, the middle of August, and we're getting them. Just now getting them. Yeah. Um, and the plants are producing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see from some of the yellowing, because it's been dry, mm -hmm. uh, it's playing havoc on the plants themselves. Yeah. Each, each tomato plant, what will that produce? Like 10 tomatoes? Or? It, it depends. Uh, the, the larger tomato plants are probably 10. The mid sized cluster ones, probably 20. Or so. Oh, nice. Yeah. But we don't get full sun. So, right. full sun, a plant will get, you know, dozens, mm -hmm. right? And then there's a couple types of plants. You have uh, tomato plants. You have what they call determinate and indeterminate. And a uh, indeterminate, they keep growing. As you can see, the height of these plants are six and seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. They'll keep growing. Okay. So they're called indeterminate uh -huh. in terms of height. 
Yeah. The terminate plant is one like this, which will only get three or four feet, and it'll stop growing, right? Mm -hmm. And still producing fruit. Right. Uh, so I just learned that this year. <laughs> well, after 30 years, after 30 40 years, years of gardening. Yeah. yeah. So we had some okra right here, some Yeah, the okra was uh, kind of, we had a whole row of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, unfortunately, a rabbit got in here and Mr. Rabbit ate it up as they first came up. Right. Uh, and then we have uh, cucumbers here, yeah. and yeah. they kind of sporadically came in. They well, got they, eaten. The rabbits got those too. Okay. So we had to grow these on our deck, and then bring until them until they got hard enough, decent size. Yeah. And then transplant them. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then of course, uh, what are these kind of beans? They're fields. These, these are pole beans. Pole beans. Yeah. And they really took off and they really produced yeah you got a lot of bushels uh maybe a bushel or two oh at least yeah yeah, yeah. it's awesome but they again they don't get full sun so if they got full sun we we have more. more beans than you could ever handle yeah cool yeah well good job you know just like yesterday we tilled this thing and seeded it and that's right it's a it's it's a miracle living off the land out here in apex north carolina yeah. So it's wonderful to have your own garden. Yeah, it's just amazing. Put a seed in the ground and you get this. You know. Plant corn, get corn. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure to see this garden grow and help my parents with the tilling. And just look at these wonderful tomatoes ripe right off the vine. Mm mm mm. <laughs> 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 That's some good eating right there. Till next time, guys. See you in the next video.